Hey everyone, welcome back to Philpot Adventures. Um, today I'm going to do something a little different. Um, Lil and I just got back from visiting Joshua Tree National Park and um, I uh, have just kind of recently in the last couple of years gotten into videography. Um, I've always been into photography since I was a kid. As a matter of fact, in the early 2000s I became a certified professional photographer and did some professional, you know, landscape, nature, and even some wedding photography. And it's all been still pictures. But what I found I really liked was the time-lapse videos. And I had never tried that before. So we got out there and we were at the RV park and I thought, well, I'm gonna give this a shot. So I went outside and I set up my camera and on the tripod and, and um, from all the information I got off of YouTube, I set my exposure and, and everything and my interval and uh, I hit the record button and went to bed. The crazy thing is, is that while I was sleeping, the camera captured the Northern Lights uh, right there in Southern California. And this was actually on October 10th that this happened. And so the next morning when I when I got the camera and I was looking through the pictures and I saw this 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 pinkish light I was like what in the world is that? I you know I didn't know I thought maybe something was on fire or or there was something you know going on but what it was was the northern lights. I went online and found out that that was you know some kind of rare occurrence and just serendipitously I caught it on camera. So I was so so excited about that. So just real quick with my camera settings, um, I have a Canon EOS R6 Mark II, and I use the 16 to 35 2.8 lens. And um, based on what I had read, I kind of guessed at the exposure. Um, so I set my ISO at 5,000, my shutter speed was 15 seconds, and my interval was 30 seconds. It took, I don't know, I took like 450 pictures or something like that. So it's a pretty short time lapse. Um, but what happened was, is, you know, I kind of overexposed it. Um, but luckily, I shot all the images in RAW. So when I brought them in the computer, I was able to fix it. So I'm real excited to show you my process. I'm no guru at this. Uh, it's my first time, um, even though I've been doing photography forever, it seems like. Um, this is the first time I've tried the time lapse thing. So uh, let's get on the computer. I'll show you what I did and how I processed the photos. All right, so I've gone ahead and imported all of the photos from the sequence uh, here into Lightroom. And what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna find one photo that's probably the most important of the whole sequence, and then I'm going to edit that one photo. So uh, just by scrolling down, we can kind of see when we start seeing the northern lights in the sky. I think this photo looks good, number 269. So we'll click on that. Okay, so as you can see here, they're, they're, the northern lights are there, but as I mentioned earlier, I really overexposed this whole thing. Plus, there's this like light refraction thing going on way over here on the right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to crop this out. So if I go to my crop tool, and then if I hold down shift, I can click and drag and just crop that right out. And then I can move the image up so that up or down and whatever you want to do so that more of the RV and the Northern Lights are in the, are in the shot. So that looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep that. Now that big refraction is out of the shot, which is good. Um, but we're still dealing with um, a shot that is way too bright. I'm going to tackle that first uh, by going straight to the exposure slider and bring that down till it looks till it looks you know pretty good i'm thinking right in this range looks pretty good so in this section i'm color grading the image if you'd like to know more about how i do this leave a comment below and i'll be sure to make a video on it All right, that looks pretty good. So what we want to do now is copy these develop settings to all the other images. So we're going to 
go down to the thumbnail number 269 we're going to right click and go to develop settings copy settings make sure check all is clicked and we're going to copy and then we're going to go up to our edit up on the up on the menu we're going to go to edit and we're going to go select all and then we're just going to go down to any of these and right click on the th on the thumbnail on the bottom right click and we're going to go to develop settings and we're going to paste the settings and that should paste to all of the photos that we have in the timeline or in the sequence all right so all of the images now have the same develop settings and as you can see there's there's quite a bit of noise in there you can see right here in the the sidewall the RV there there's a lot of noise so what's really cool is that Lightroom has a an AI generated denoise tool now that is pretty darn awesome and it's right here if you go to the right and you click and you scroll down a little bit you'll see noise reduction denoise so we're gonna click that And if you look at the screen here, you can see this is this is what it looked like before. After de the denoise is applied, I mean, it really cleans things up nice. So now what we're going to do, we're going to um, start this process to enhance every photo that's in, in the sequence. Um, estimated time, 378 minutes. Um, I've done this before, and I know it takes about three hours. So let's get that started and then I'll be right back. All right, and just like that, I'm back and it's been about three hours. All of the files are processed now. So we're just gonna open up our video editor. I use DaVinci Resolve. And we are going to start a new project. And I'm just gonna go to our media tab. And we're gonna import all of the files. So I'll find them on my hard drive here. And here's all the files. So I'm gonna go ahead and select them all. Just like that. And then I want, I don't want these to come in as individual um, clips. I want them to come in as a sequence. And so to do that, I go right up here to these three little dots and I go into my frame display mode and I will click sequence. And for some reason it split, it split them up. This one only has like five frame or five, yeah, five frames. I'm just going to bring this one into the timeline or uh, into the media pool. So I'll bring that in and then I will go to my cut page and I'll bring that into the timeline and then I'll go to my timeline and then once that is in there um, it's really ready to view so here I'll show you what it looks like here we go so you can see the moon is setting here I, I, I go to bed the lights go out the moon sets and then the northern lights appear which to me is just incredibly amazing I've never seen the northern lights before in my life just to see that my camera captured them was amazing so so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna show you exactly how it turned out in the video um, the clip from the video and you'll notice that it looks a little bit different because I had processed this before and I processed it different, I'm sure. Anyway, here it is, and this is what it looks like in the final product. Out here, under a blanket of stars, the universe reveals its secrets. And tonight, it's giving us a gift few ever see in this part of the world, a brush of the Northern Lights. It's a fleeting moment a reminder that magic still exists, if you know where to look. In this sky, time seems to stand still, and for just a moment, we're a part of something much larger than ourselves.
When you start exploring night sky time-lapse photography, you'll discover it's really not that difficult to do, and you'll connect with the universe in brand new ways. If you'd like to see the entire Joshua Tree video, you can click right here. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of exploring and discovering to do. Uh, Lillian and I would really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, it means a lot. And we will see you on the next Philpot adventure. Bye-bye.